Well, it's Tuesday, beginning of another week in Isaiah. Uh, today we'll be finishing up this uh, historical interlude that we call the Book of Hezekiah. Tomorrow we'll be heading into the third section and final section of the Book of Isaiah, the Book of Consolation, which runs from chapters 40 to 66. Today, though, we're in chapter 39, which I call the foolishness of Hezekiah. And uh, let me put this in some historical context. This is happening uh, sometimes after the, uh, Hezekiah and Jerusalem were delivered. Uh, Jerusalem was delivered from the hands of the king of Assyria, whereas uh, Hezekiah was delivered from the jaws of death. Uh, Daniel um, told us in um, Daniel chapter 2, uh, that there's a succession of kingdoms. So there was going to be, after the Assyrian kingdom, Babylonian kingdom would go to come next. Then after the Babylonian kingdom, uh, the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. Uh, then the uh, kingdom of Greece, followed by the kingdom of Rome. And then ultimately God's glorious kingdom, his king returning to sit on his throne Hezekiah is alive during that transition, the beginning of the transition at any rate, from the Assyrian Empire to the Babylonian. Now when we come to Isaiah chapter 39, we see that, um, well just look at verse 1. At that time, uh, Merodalic Baladan, the son of Baladan, <coughs> excuse me, king of Babylon, sent envoys with letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and had recovered. So here's the king of Babylon sending a gift to King Hezekiah. Um, allies, to some extent, because they have a common enemy in Assyria, and this is what he does. And while his envoys are there, uh, in verses um, uh, 2, uh, Hezekiah shows them all the treasures of his kingdom and the treasures of the temple. Ultimately, this is going to prove to be too much for the king of Babylon to resist. And ultimately, if you know your Bible history, he's going to come and he's going to invade Jerusal Judah and Jerusalem. But in verse 3, Isaiah the prophet comes to King Hezekiah and said to him, What do these men say and, where, and from where did they come? And Hezekiah said, they have come to me from a far country from Babylon. What have they seen in your house, says Isaiah? Hezekiah answered, they have seen everything in my house. There is nothing in my storehouse that I did not show them. Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word, hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that is your fathers have stored up till this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. Some of your own sons who will come from you, whom you will father, they will be taken away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Isaiah has done something foolish here. You're this man who learned these lessons. He learned these spiritual lessons in the last chapter is again showing himself to be a fallen, depraved individual. Uh, he's showing off, he's demonstrating his wealth to what's going to be his enemy. Uh, very uh, sad situation, but confirms to us a couple of things. Number one, that uh, no matter how great a man might be, how great a king might be, uh, he's not the Messiah. He's not the promised Messiah that's going to come and rule in righteousness and holiness. That is not Hezekiah. That's not him. It also confirms to us that uh, depravity exists in all men. This urge to perhaps show off, urge to demonstrate his wealth will become his downfall, the downfall of his kingdom. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of the Lord that you have spoken is good. Uh, the word there is tov. Uh, we hear this over and over again in Genesis chapter 1. God created and it was tov. It was good. 
It's hard to say if uh, what he means by this here, if he means it's a righteous thing or it's an appropriate thing or um, it's something that's uh, just aligned with God's will. Uh, Hezekiah seems to be um, acknowledging that uh, God's will is going to prevail. And uh, he's looking at the bright side. There will be peace and security in my days. Uh, again, I think myself, commentators are divided on what this means, that he's saying this. My view is it's a further demonstration of his depravity. Sad situation here, a sad way for Hezekiah to end. But, you know, we see this frequently in the historical books that even good kings come to kind of sad endings because simply they are not the Messiah. So a couple of things to learn from this um, is that, um, you know, even uh, the best men are just men. Uh, even the best men are flawed. That we need to be looking forward uh, to Jesus. You may, have, you may be very fortunate, and I pray that you are, to be in a great church with a great pastor, a man of integrity, man of holiness, a man who cares about you and cares about God's word. Um, but ultimately, he's just a man. So don't idolize a man. You can admire, you can appreciate, you could be thankful for all the good qualities of the men and women who are in your life. But ultimately, they all just point forward to the Messiah that's still coming. Uh, Jesus is the one who deserves all of our praise all of our glory, all of our uh, ascribed glory, all of our worship, not men. So, again, uh, don't exalt men, don't lift them up. But at the same time, uh, you can be grateful and you can be thankful and recognize that God works in even flawed people. People like you and I, brothers and sisters, uh, people who are, um, um, have hearts and minds that aspire to the Lord, but we still have really uh, feet of clay. So God bless you, and I hope this has uh, been interesting for you as we've gone through Isaiah 39 chapters so far. Tomorrow we'll start a new section uh, called the Book of Consolation. So God bless you in your study of Isaiah.